In this video, we're going to review a little bit from last time and make some adjustments to our user environment. So the first thing you'll notice about this screen is that it's our work surface, but there's no grid. And down here at the bottom, it says metric, and I can already tell that. So I need to change it from metric so I'm going to go up to edit user environment and just switch it to imperial very first thing and I've got three-eighths of an inch CLM allowances as my standard and then I'm going to click on the little save icon you can always just click the X box but it will make you save it anyway so next to user environment under edit again is customize and we've got preferences and screen layout I'm gonna start with screen layout and I want a grid I don't need quick open see do you see that toolbar down there it it's kinda taking up space so I usually close it you can leave it open user input that's the box that tells you where what to do next it's the computer's way of talking with you so I like that one on the information bar at the bottom is helpful because you can see the name of the piece and that it's imperial and a number of other things and the icon bar has your piece list on it. You can't see them yet, but that's what that is. The prompt bar, I don't usually find helpful either. The status bar, you can tell that, it, well, it says ready down there. I don't like it to disappear off the page, so I leave it there. Then rulers, that's up to you. And grid lines, I'm going to make mine dots and it automatically comes up with one inch spacing and I like one inch spacing so I'm just going to say apply grid and that works out really well for me if you wanted to you could do cross hairs instead or lines but I prefer the dots so you get to choose what you want to do I would leave these boxes unchecked they're also down here and I would rather not have them set to be on so I just turn them on when I want them to so that's everything user input info bar icon bar status bar one inch spacing dots apply grid and then say OK Alright, I'm hoping you've got me up in the corner of the screen and you have already opened the pattern design program that we're in. It's the one with the scissors. Alright, so we did screen layout. I'm in edit, customize again. We did screen layout and now I want to do preferences. And we're going to start with paths. and I'm going to make sure that I have a place to put things I'm I'm testing out the different computers and this one doesn't have any names in it so I'm going to just choose data 90 and P notch and I only have options for A1 ladies and different sizes so I'm going to choose a one ladies just so I have a rule table in there to hold the position so the important thing is C drive data 90 and add the other two okay so I'm going to apply and save so that I don't have to do it again next time it's still worth checking however while I'm here I'm going to move over to general mine 
is under magno med oh dear. magnetic tolerance is set to 10 and I would have fixed seam corners on, display piece notes. I don't think we need. And okay, so modify grade rules may come in handy. Fix seam corners, non smoothing to ends, show seam warnings. And the quick open on this one is set to AccuMark model, but you can make it AccuMark piece, and then you can see all the pieces individually. And I think that's helpful for beginners. Then the default area is where you want it to, and the value mode, we're going to choose reset to cursor. So AccuMark piece, default area, and reset to cursor in the drop down boxes. Then under measure chart, measure chart editor auto save every five minutes and I would say apply and save to that section as well. Then under display on mine I have filled pieces so I'll show you that I'm going to check the box I like fit pieces in work area I don't like to show actual notch depths because then sometimes you can't see them. Orientation symbol is your grain line you don't need that, but you do need show point and line information. So in the first box under display in piece, you have the first three filled symbols, filled pieces, symbols, and fit pieces in work area. Then in the next column, orientation symbol and show point and line information. Then in the drop down boxes under perimeter mode, you want clipped and in internal pattern you want dashed. If you leave it solid the way this one was, we'll get more into that in the future but it will be really hard to tell what changes you plan to make. So change those to clipped and dash and then under piece information at the center you want the name and Sometimes the size is printed wrong, so you can just leave that off to all of our pieces that are set up in here are size 8. And apply and save. Now here's the fun one, is color. And you want to change your colors a little bit from what this one is. If you remember last time I, I highlighted parts and when it was selected it was red. You want each of these to be distinctly different from each other because it's less confusing as you're working. So original I've got black, highlighted, green is fine, but near I don't want that to be black too. So I'm going to go in and change that to blue. If I want to, I can change the color of blue, play with the colors. It's just one of those nice, feel good, control of your environment things. And then modified, I'm going to make that one purple. And selected, I'm going to make it a little brighter. All right, so I've got distinctly different colors, and you can push pause and play with that if you want to. Okay, then under fabric fill, you may not have noticed mine were partially opaque. So I'm going to bring some pieces in for you to see what's happening for this part. So I'm going to say apply and save and OK, and it's going to disappear, and I'm going to go up to File, Open, and I will just bring in, you probably don't want to use any of the ones that are in this section. They came with the computer, and they don't fit the dress form. So I'm going to go to the P drive again, and to Zero Share. It's in Model, so I'm going to have to switch to Piece, and 
sometimes that will trip you up if you forget to look at where you're headed and how it's going to display. So in pieces, I'm going to open zero share, go all the way to the end again, and my skirt back in front, shift, and my bodice back in front, control, and open. So I drag, drag my cursor with my left button pushed and then push the left button again and all the pieces are down here and do you see how they're different than the ones I had last time they're solid and you can't see through the pieces and when you're looking at them on top of each other well they're a little bit opaque but I I tend to like them a little more opaque than that. You can leave them this color, it's oak tag color, but we're going to go back up to edit, customize again, in preferences, and color, and under fabric type if you want to you can change the color of your pieces. I like a shade that kind of goes with the background, but we won't do that. We'll use pink this time say okay. So I'm going to say apply. So they're all pink. And oh, I was going to move them, but I can't. So you can see that this one is selected and it's outlined and that's the highlighted color. And it doesn't look very green on that pink. So I'm going to move my opacity down. It's it's pink now, but I'm going to make it so that I can see through it better and I like it in the 40s. This is something you get to choose so choose something you like so I'm going to say apply and you can see how much lighter that is and they're easy to see it's kind of fun to have pink. So these are all distinctly different but now my modified is going to be really similar to my fabric type color and I may need to change modified I'm going to change it to yellow okay and with this color the green and the blue are going to be really similar so I'm going to switch that to that shade of blue okay these just need to be different colors and they are automatically so you'll probably be okay leaving those two the same you could change your work area the grid or the grid you can change any of it but I don't want my darts and my fullness to be the same color so I'm going to change that one to blue so now I have different okay so play with that and you can always change it again. Apply, save, and OK. So now as I hover, that's that pale green. And when I move them around, you can see them on top of each other and see through them. And I'm playing with my um, scroll roller. And I'm going to come over here in the middle at the end of the pieces and make them larger or if I was going a different direction you know but where you have your cursor when you use the roller bar is going to make a difference okay I think that's a good video length